Hi everyone, um, today is the 2nd of November. We've got a storm coming in, I can't remember the name of it, um, but it's gusting up to 75 miles per hour on the coast. Um, my client today has cancelled, partly because of the weather concerns and also because they're under the, under the weather themselves. So if you're watching this, I hope you get well soon, mate. And um, I'm gonna fish the spot that we had lined up for today anyway, which is the River Chew in Cainshire Memorial Park. It's a good spot for um, adverse weather conditions because it's got the shelter from the valley and it's also got the tree line either side and it has a, a very low, a slow response to flood water. It'll be running chocolate brown but it won't be anything like as high as neighbouring rivers. It's got good depth, good cover, good flow. There's a chance of um, a barbel but I need to get this kit set up quickly before this rain really comes in. Two or three years since I last properly fished this river for my own pleasure, certainly in terms of trying to target barbel and chub. I had reasonable success catching fish in the sort of three to four pound range, might have even been about five years ago. The question is, are there any still in this section? Probably not, they probably all dropped down into the main river. Being in the town centre, you get quite a lot of local community walking through, and the only people I'm seeing are the older folk, who basically don't take any notice, don't give a damn about these weather warnings. I mean, really, if you'd watched the news, you would have thought that right now my umbrella would be being blown out up into the sky and I'd be uh, swept off my feet by a raging torrent. I don't half sensationalise it. In my last video, I used the, the krill boilers to good effect. But I think in this venue, I'm, I'm going to fish the worm because um, A, it's underrated, B, there'll be loads washed in with this flood water. And it just gives me the chance of a bonus species, like a perch or a roach. I've left all my lobworms in my course coaching box at home. Adrenaline quick stop bead connector. Hopefully you can see that. That's just hooked on. And it's that bead that you push over, bead that you push over the top that keeps it all in place. And uh, behind that I've got a, uh, a running ring. So I'm going to attach a two ounce lead on. Something is on that, Tom. Yeah. No, missed it. That's great though to get a bite like that on a big piece of meat. This time of day, that's really promising. Same spot. There we are, we're in. Oh, he's off. No, he's not. Oh, I'm glad I've gummed up. There's so many snags in this river. Now he's going up river. Can't really afford to give him an inch. Well, he thinks differently. In the net. Ah, sweet. Hey, how about that? Get the conditions right and you'll catch fish. I was really keen to do some pike fishing after my disastrous session at Langorse. But uh, that's cool. Really nice to know these fish are still here. Just put my silly hat on. Only a baba, really. But I'll tell you, I didn't half pull in that current. There's the hook. All right, mate. That's the hook. 
out. Right, right, right. Maybe very lively. Like grey length, the way they flip around. Nah, come on, that's why you need an unhooky mat with barbel. Alright, mate, alright. Come on, come on. Oh, it's got so much energy. Hey, hey, three or four pounds, I reckon. So, they're still in here. They're not easy to catch, but when the floods come up, catch a rising river and they will go on the feed. Hopefully that's the start of many to come. So important to rest barbel. So important to rest barbel when you're um <sighs> Never mind the barbel, I think it's me that needs a rest. <laughs> Multitasking. <sighs> this one's actually ready to go. Because he's smaller, a smaller fish, I could get him in quite quick. But he wasn't out of the water long. Let's this one go. What a beautiful fish. Yeah, it's weird, you've got more chance of catching barbel here, it seems, than you have chub. Ten years ago that certainly wasn't the case, very much the other way around. It's free to fish here, which is pretty incredible. It does get busy at weekends. Parking's £2.50 for eight hours. So with my second rod, I want to just put a bait out and forget about it. Uh, I want it well out of the way, so I can have some space in front of me if I need to land fish on either rod. A lot of debris coming down now. Oi! <laughs> you made me jump! Go on, shoot! No! No! Oi! Go on, shoot! Shoot! Go on, no, 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 get away! Yeah, so there's three things you've got to watch out for here. Dogs, dog poo and rats. Oh! No! Go on, shoo! Shoo! Go on! Oh, man! Go away! Go on, shoo! Go on! Scram! Go on, go away. Go on, shoo. Go on, get out. Go on, shoo. Go on, shoo. Get out of it. Go on. I don't get it. You need a rod license to fish, but you don't need a license to own a dog. Stand there blowing your whistle as much as you like, the dog's not coming. It's funny, despite all the pre baiting, I've not had a touch since, and it begs the question of what's more important pre baiting or casting into the right spot, or the bait you're using, or the method you're using, all those considerations and conditions you're fishing in. But yeah, the tackle manufacturers and the bait manufacturers will tell you it's the bait you're using or the tackle you're using. Pre-baiting, I think it's massively overrated because if you're not putting that bait in the right spot, it's not gonna make the blind spit difference because, you know, this is a wild environment. There's plenty of natural food for these fish. They're gonna be holed up somewhere where they're safe. And it's probably better to put a single bait out into those areas where they think they're safe than it is to try and draw them out. So that's what I'm gonna try and do next. Get a bit braver with my casting. There's not normally much flow to this river. As you can see, it's really starting to tank through now. The longer this flood's gone on for, the more crap is coming through the river and making it very difficult to present a bait for more than 10 minutes before too much stuff gets tangled down the line. I you can see from the bend in the rod just how much crud there is on there. Look, look at that. One tip I would give for fishing here is to 
wind in quickly. If you wind in slow, you'll catch snag. Well, that's it. What started off to be a very promising session um, has petered out very quickly. And if I was coaching the chat last week today, it would be time to pack up and go home. So, I might do the same actually. 